With remote server management, and this is really one of the key uh, uh, things to be aware of in 2012 and 2016, is that we can now manage these servers remotely. Uh, so by managing them remotely, we can take advantage of the benefits of Server Core, right, which is this very low, very small footprint version of Microsoft Windows Server, uh, but we still can use all those GUI tools that we like to use. So we don't have to sacrifice all of those and use the command shell only. Um, so we can use the fancy GUI. So and, and what you can really do with Windows Server 2012, which is kind of nice, in the old days when we used to manage a lot of servers, we would remote into all these servers with something like remote desktop connection to manage those. But now you can give yourself a sort of a dashboard with the server management tools and use that to manage many servers on the network without ever connecting to those servers directly through the console. So you can just use that GUI that's available, you know, the, the server manager to connect to all these remote systems. So we're going to talk about that here briefly. The need for a physical keyboard and monitor for every server is significantly reduced because we can do all of this stuff remotely now, which is important for servers. They're sitting in a rack in a closet somewhere. Nobody wants to go and sit in front of these machines. So most of the remote, remote management tasks are handled by using the server manager, MMCs, or the PowerShell command line. Those are the three basic tools that we have for managing servers. If the server is running server manager is a member of a domain and the server that you're trying to add is also a domain member, then you can add it with one of these three methods. You can either search Active Directory for servers, uh, you can search DNS, or you can import a text file. And you can manage servers running Windows 2003 and later, but you won't be able to manage servers that are newer than your server. So if you're on a 2012, you won't be able to use the 2012 server manager to manage the 2016 server, but you can go the other way. So generally it's better to do this from, a from whatever the newest version of Windows 2 uh, server uh, you have. In any event, what we're talking about here is, you know, you guys have seen this server manager quite a few times in this course so far. What we're talking about here is how to connect that server manager to remote machines to manage them. Uh, so basically, it's going to look like this. When you're in the server manager, you're going to add servers. You're going to click the button to add servers, and you have these three options, Active Directory, DNS, or Import. So when you click on those, you'll be able to search for all the machines that you have available on the network. You can add them to the right-hand side and they'll be available for you to manage them in your server manager once you add them. If you have a large enterprise, I would caution you from adding all of your servers. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to add all the servers here, just the ones that you need to access. Um, can bog things down if you add all of them in there, although it's tempting to do that, but you should think critically about which servers you're going to need to manage. So organizations with a dozen or more servers, uh, you may want to organize them into groups. So you can organize them by the department, by a location, by their function, um, you know, whatever organizational boundaries that you have, uh, you, can, you can use to organize these machines or these servers. So for example, you can group all the servers related to the operations department, all servers in the Phoenix department, or all your DNS servers could be one group. And by the way, servers can be members of more than one group. So you can have both. You can have groups by department, groups by location, and groups by function. And those servers can be members of all of the groups that are relevant to them. So if you know you want to manage DNS servers, you go to the DNS group. And regardless of which department or location they're in, you see all of your DNS servers. But if you go to a certain location, you'll only see uh, servers that are located within that location. Uh, and likewise, you could maybe look for all the servers for the accounting department, regardless of which office or location they're at and what their function is. So you can use multiple groups um, or have multiple groups that apply to multiple servers. So it's a many-to-many -many relationship. So this is what it's going to look like when you're creating your server groups. Uh, so it's the server pool option, as you can see here, to create your uh, to create your groups. So in order to do remote management, you're going to have to make sure you have the Windows Remote Management installed. Uh, this is a feature that provides command line interface for performing a variety of management tasks, which we're going to talk about. To change the remote management setting, you're going to click the setting next to the label remote management in the local server properties window. So you'll have to have this installed before you can do remote server management. And you can see this is what it looks like. You're going to click on local server and you'll click the button that says remote management, which is highlighted here. It's not a button, it's a link really. And you'll check that little box and click OK. Once you have this configured, you're also going to have to configure the firewall for remote management. Uh, so you do have to configure the firewall in order for all of this to work. Um, different MMCs are going to require different rules in the firewall. In other words, different uh, management snap-ins, uh, for example. So using the Windows firewall, so if you have the full GUI uh, in a server that you're trying to manage, you can simply go into the GUI 
for in the server manager GUI and open up the Windows firewall settings and you can enable advanced security MMC uh, to configure the firewall rules. So you're gonna set up some inbound rules. You need the COM plus network access inbound rule, remote event log management inbound rule, remote event log management, and remote event log management. So there's three different versions of remote uh, event log management. And of course, the most important one I think is gonna be the COM plus network access, which allows the, uh, the uh, snap-ins to work across the network. So you're gonna to need to make sure that these are enabled in the firewall. Here's what it looks like in your inbound rules in the firewall. So you'll make sure you turn those on. So it'll allow the traffic to the server that you're trying to manage. Now, of course, some of the servers that you're trying to manage are not gonna have a GUI. So you're gonna to have to manage the firewall from the command shell or from PowerShell rather. And these are the commands that you'll run in the PowerShell. And again, these are, of course are in the textbook as well. So you don't have to memorize them obviously. Uh, so to configure the firewall, you're gonna enter these two commands here at the bottom. So again, you might you could either uh, enable these firewall rules from the GUI, or you're going to have to use the PowerShell to do that if you don't have a GUI, which as we know, some servers won't have that command shell. So server core does not have the COM plus network access firewall group, so you may have to enable them manually. Uh, when these are some of the groups that you might need, depending on what you're going to be managing on that server remotely. In the next slide deck, I'm going to talk about how to configure services.